Here's why the Boston Celtics could win the 2024 NBA title. After acquiring a third 23 plus point per game score, a third 8 plus rebound per game board getter, and a third 1 plus block per game rim protector in Chris Stapp's Porzingis, albeit having to give up 2022 DPOI Marcus Smart, in a deal where they almost landed Chris Stapps for Malcolm Brogdon, stemming an intriguing subplot which we'll get to later on, Boston's ready to let Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Derek White take over as far and away primary creators. Given Tatum's working out with franchise legend Paul Pierce, Porzingis is prioritizing the 2023-24 season by skipping the World Cup, plus both he and reigning sixth man of the year in Brogdon are expected to be healthy, the Celtics are gearing up for prime time. Before breaking down all that and more, 78.3% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed, so if you love basketball talk and haven't already, subscribe and turn on notifications, drop a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and for channel updates and NBA mixtapes like this one of Jalen Brown, be sure to follow at dflowhoops on Instagram. I'm also on X where I'm involved in NBA discourse and post channel updates as well. Go follow me there, same handle, at dflowhoops. Thank you for any bit of support. Back to the content. Not enough people are valuing the fact that Boston added a third all-star to the mix this offseason by trading for Chris Stapp's Porzingis. The defensive ability of Porzingis pairs with Time Lord Robert Williams III and Godfather Al Horford to make Boston's rim protection that much more lethally overwhelming for the opposition. Since being selected 4th overall in the 2015 NBA Draft by the New York Knicks, the Unicorns posted a staggering 7 different seasons where he's averaged at least a block and a half per game. His lateral movement is stellar for a center. His reactivity and positioning is elusive. It's all about staying healthy for Chris Dapps, which we'll get to later on, but given Derek White made the all-defensive second team in 22-23, Al Horford's aging not being as quick as he once was, and Robert Williams struggled to stay healthy last year, acquiring another back end of the defense safety and shot blocker in KP, while giving up a pesky perimeter stopper in Smart was something Boston could afford to do. In more recent news, Boston also just made another minor acquisition, picking up a player who used to play for my Raptors in Svi Mihailuk. Svi is likely to fill out an end of the bench role and likely won't crack the rotation, but he does add insurance behind White, Brogdon, Pritchard, J.D. Davison, and another former Raptor in Delano Banson at the guard position. On the topic of Pritchard, he'll have a bigger role without Smart, something he and Celtic fans were hoping for last season. It's a good sign for Peyton's development that he set the scoring record at the Ball Don't Stop Pro-Am, dropping 61 points. In terms of the newest Celtic in Svi, he actually had a really solid year for the Hornets and Knicks last season. In 32 outings, he attempted an average of 3.1 triples each game and made 42.4% of them, so he may be a valuable floor spacer worth putting out there at times. Additionally, a possession featuring a Svi pick and roll generated 1.22 points per possession last season, which among 226 players to receive at least 100 on-ball screens, ranked first. This might be an underrated pickup. Not too long ago, President and former head coach Brad Stevens released his reasoning to the Boston media behind trading Marcus Smart, saying, Very obviously, we need Jason and Jalen to continue to grow in that leadership area. We think they're among the best that there can be. We need them to step up to that. To Brad's point, Tatum and Brown being trusted as the main decision makers over the entirety of the 2023-24 regular season is going to be extremely beneficial for their development in the playmaking department which needs to happen. Being trusted more as ball handlers will help their response to defensive pressure once the playoffs hit. In previous years, Smart was counted on significantly to make all of the plays, and while he was a valuable extra creator, bottom line is, it was time for the Jays to start taking care of the offensive dirty work that Marcus was accustomed to. Let's get to the Celtics subplot for this offseason, being that Boston was initially set to trade Malcolm Brogdon to the LA Clippers in the three-team deal which netted them Chris Dapp's Porzingis from the Washington Wizards. According to reports, that initial deal fell apart when the Clippers had concerns about Brogdon's health status, which led to the Memphis Grizzlies jumping in as the third team in the Porzingis trade, obviously acquiring Marcus Smart instead of Malcolm Brogdon. And now the goal for the Celtics has become to rebuild the trust with their backup point guard. Stevens also spoke on the Brogdon trade falling apart, saying, Malcolm is really important, that was tough. He certainly doesn't deserve that and I feel for him. We've talked, obviously, since then. There are a lot of narratives out there because of that that certainly are inaccurate. 
Reportedly, the team is insistent both publicly and privately that Brogdon will be healthy enough for camp. Also, Joe Mazzulla signaled that rebuilding the relationship with Brogdon is a work in progress after the failed trade to the Clippers. Regarding the health status of Chris Dapps Porzingis, and it also seems like he'll be ready to go. Chris Stapps himself detailed his own status, saying, I now have a four to six week plan that I have to follow. Feelings are good. Of course, I'm not yet in a shape that I can play and train fully, but going step by step, everything should be fine by the start of the NBA season. Porzingis makes the Celtics more dynamic on both ends of the court, but as President Stevens alluded to, for Boston to reach the next level collectively, it'll be on the Jays to make that leap. For the product of California, two-time All-Star and 22-23 All-NBA second team member who's now the highest paid player in league history, $304 million man Jalen Brown, it bodes well for the Celtics' chances in 2024 that he's already coming off a monster year. JB posted career highs in points, rebounds, field goal, and free throw percentage. Then again, they'll need him to avoid four plus turnover games, which he had three of in the Eastern Conference Finals against Miami, which included an eight turnover outing in game seven. Brown will also be expected to reward a Celtic front office that was extremely generous in paying him an average of 60 million per year, despite the fact that he made a measly 16.3% of 43 total attempted three point shots in those Eastern Conference Finals, which is unacceptable. Jalen is one of the most exciting players to watch in basketball, but the near 27-year-old still has certain aspects in his repertoire that need leveling up. One of the best signs if you're a Celtic fan this offseason is Jason Tatum training with the truth, Paul Pierce. Pierce was one of the most mentally tough players of all time. This stone-cold pull-up in the face of LeBron back in 2012 put the Super Team Heat on the verge of elimination and is etched in the memory of every fan who was watching that game live. Furthermore, Pierce has scored slash assisted on the most buzzer-beating game winners, displaying that on paper, he's the most clutch ever. However, the 2008 NBA champion's perseverance was actually proven off the court in a shocking tragedy he was able to overcome. This was right before the 2000-2001 season had kicked off. Pierce was stabbed 11 times in the face, neck, and back at a Boston nightclub, yet just over a month later, recovered to play a full 82-game season while averaging over 25 points per game. If anyone did that in the modern age, they'd be treated like a god, so put some respect on the name of Paul Pierce. Tatum should take every tip and trick he can get from Pierce, but it's nevertheless a good sign for New England sports fans to see two top players from the last two most successful Celtic eras coexisting. The phrase unfinished business is definitive for this Celtic ball club. With an Eastern Conference championship, four trips to the Eastern Conference Finals for Jason Tatum, and five trips to the Eastern Conference Finals for Jalen Brown, the only thing left to accomplish is a Larry O'Brien trophy. Brace yourself, Noah Lyles, but winning a world championship seems implausible at this point after coming up short time and time again. However, as a man by the name of Kevin Maurice Garnett once said, Anything's possible! Anything's possible! This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.